It's not always straightforward when it comes to identifying acids and bases and reactions. So I'm going to show you what you need to know and some tips to help you easily identify acids, bases, as well as their conjugates in reactions. But first, let's get to know the different types of acids and bases. An Arrhenius acid is a proton donor meaning it's a compound that releases H+, or it's H plus itself. Bromic acid is an example. An Arrhenius base is a hydroxide donor, meaning it's a compound that releases OH-, or is OH- itself. An example is potassium hydroxide. When an Arrhenius acid reacts with an Arrhenius base, the products will be salt and water. The potassium bromide on the left is a salt, and on the right, the proton combined with the hydroxide forming water. Let's look more closely at what happens during the reaction. Acids and bases are electrolytes, which are soluble in water. An acid in the presence of a base will become even more soluble in water. Both will dissolve in water, releasing a proton and a hydroxide. And opposites attract, so the bromine will attract the potassium and the hydroxide will attract the proton, recombining to form salt and water. Arrhenius acid base reactions are easy to identify because there's water formation. This is referred to as a neutralization reaction, which occurs via recombination reactions or double displacement reactions, which are pretty much the same thing. A Bronsted-Lowry acid is also a proton donor. Again, a compound that releases H+, or H+, itself. An example is nitrous acid. A Bronsted-Lowry base is a proton acceptor, meaning a compound or atom with a negative charge or lone pair that can form a bond with a proton. An example is methoxide, which has a negative charge, which actually indicates an extra lone pair, which is very attractive to positively charged ions, especially a proton. When a Bronsted-Lowry acid reacts with a Bronsted-Lowry base, the proton from the acid is donated to the base, meaning the base accepts the proton, forming a bond with it. Let's look closer at this reaction. The Bronsted-Lowry acid has a proton attached to an oxygen, which is a bond that's easily broken, and the Bronsted-Lowry base has a negative charge, which again is an extra lone pair, which is hugely attracted to the proton, so essentially what happens is the acid transfers a proton to the base. This occurs via single displacement reactions. A Lewis acid is a lone pair acceptor, meaning it's a compound or atom with a positive charge or a non-fulfilled octet, which means it can form a bond with two electrons donated by another compound or atom. A Lewis base is a lone pair donor, meaning it's a compound or atom with a lone pair to contribute to forming a bond with an atom or compound with a positive charge or non-fulfilled octet. It's easy to identify a Lewis acid and base reaction because the Lewis acid will form a bond with the Lewis base and result in one product. Let's look more closely into this reaction. This Lewis acid is forming three bonds with methyl groups, which means it's surrounded by only six electrons, meaning it has a non-fulfilled octet. The Lewis base is a nitrogen bonded to two hydrogens and one methyl group with a lone pair to spare. The lone pair on the Lewis base will be attracted to the atom on the Lewis acid with a non-fulfilled octet and form a bond with it. The bond formed between the two is a coordinate covalent bond, and the product that is formed is referred to as an adduct or a coordination complex. This is essentially a combination reaction. To help remember what Lewis acids and bases are, think of Lewis dot structures, where dots are electrons. So Lewis bases transfer two electrons to Lewis acids. Here's a summary of all the different types of acids and bases. 
So pause and screenshot it if you want to keep it for your notes. You may have already noticed this, but another factor that can help in identifying acids and bases is to know that acids are generally positively charged atoms, molecules, or compounds, and bases are generally negatively charged atoms, molecules, or compounds. One of the most frequent questions I get when having to discern the difference between acids is what's the difference between Arrhenius acid and Bronsted and Lari acid since they both are proton donors? Well, Arrhenius acids donate protons to hydroxides. So identify an acid as Arrhenius if there is a hydroxide in the reaction or if there is water as a product. Bronsted and Lari acids also donate protons. However, only identify acids as Bronsted and Lari if there is no hydroxide in the reactants and no water in the products. Another confusion with discerning the difference between acids and bases is the difference between Bronsted and Lari and Lewis bases. A Bronsted and Lari base is a proton acceptor, whereas a Lewis base is a lone pair donor. The main question I get is, if Lewis base is a lone pair donor, couldn't it also technically donate to a proton? Well, the short answer is no. A Bronsted and Lari base is a proton acceptor. So only identify a base as Bronsted and Lari if there is a proton in the reactants of the reaction. A Lewis base donates lone pairs to Lewis acids, not to protons. So identify a base as Lewis if there is no proton in the reactants of the reaction. So now let's identify acids and bases in an example. So when asked which compound is acting as an acid, well, acting as means actors or reactors, meaning the answer has to come from the reactants. Well, the reactant on the left has a hydrogen that it can donate as a proton. This makes it the acid. And the other reactant is the base. Then, when asked what type of acid it is, Arrhenius, Bronsted and Lari, or Lewis, well, the acid is a proton donor, so it cannot be Lewis. And the base is a hydroxide donor, so it cannot be Bronsted and Lari. Plus, there's water in the products, making it an Arrhenius acid. Let's look at another example. In this case, the question is, which compound is acting as a base? But once again, acting as means it has to come from the reactants. Just like in the previous example, it was easy to identify the acid, making the other reactant the base. Or, since alkali and alkali earth metals are hugely soluble and always break off as positively charged ions, break the sodium off to leave behind a negatively charged nitrogen, making it the base. And therefore, the other reactant is the acid. Now, when asked what type of base, well, the acid is a proton donor, so it can't be a Lewis base. And there is no hydroxide in the reaction, so it can't be Arrhenius which leaves us with a Bronsted Lari base. Let's try one more example. Which compounds are the acid and the base? Well, the compound on the left has a positive charge, making it the acid. And the compound on the right is the base. What type of acid and base? Well, the acid is not a proton donor, so it's not Arrhenius or Bronsted Lari making it a Lewis base with a lone pair and a Lewis acid. Now that you know how to identify acids and bases, it'll be easy to identify the conjugate acids and bases. Start by identifying the acid and the base in the reaction. The reactant on the left has a proton, making it the acid. Therefore, the reactant on the right is the base. The conjugate acid and bases are always in the products. After an acid reacts, it will become a conjugate base, and after a base reacts, it will become a conjugate acid. There are a couple ways of identifying conjugate acids and bases. One way is to follow the acid compound, like the CO3, to the products, and identifying that as the conjugate base. That's what happened to the acid after it reacted. 
Or you could follow the base compound to the products and call it the conjugate acid. That's what happened to the base after it reacted. Another way to identify conjugate acids and bases is to follow the base compound to the products and call it the conjugate acid, making the other product the conjugate base. Or follow the acid, meaning the proton, to the products and identifying that as the conjugate acid and the other product will be the conjugate base. Simple as that. I hope this video showed you everything you need to know plus some about acids, bases, and their conjugates in order to easily identify them in reactions. For more videos on how to identify acids, bases, and their conjugates in reactions, visit our website or click the link in the description below. And thank you for watching this video.